In the name of Jesus. John is in jail for speaking the truth. Herod and Herodias' marriage was forbidden by God's law, but they couldn't handle the truth. And so, Herodias insisted that Herod jail John since they couldn't silence him they would silence him in a cell. So there John sits, having gladly preached the gospel, having joyfully confessed the truth. Speaking the truth in love may not have us jailed today, but in the future it may cause a loss of prestige perhaps a loss of livelihood, or even the loss of our freedom. But we must speak the truth, the truth about life and our unborn brothers and sisters, the truth about marriage, a gift given by God to be enjoyed between one man and one woman for life. We must stand on the side of the truth, even if we are perceived as being on the wrong side of history. Being in prison is rather dark. A darkness sets in in John's heart. For is this place a place of God's judgment? What have I done wrong? John keeps hearing the words and deeds of the Christ. This is the only cure to the darkness of our hearts. Faith comes by hearing, but it also is sustained, nourished, strengthened by hearing. It is not as if we hear once and we'll be fine. Instead, we keep hearing hearing throughout our lives. Is it any wonder then when Luther said about reforming services that he put preaching as a vital element, not only for the edification of the people, but also to sustain their faith? For we do not live by bread alone, but by every word coming forth from the mouth of God. John sends his disciples to receive some more words to feed to him. But I don't think that's the only thing going on here. No, he plants a question for them to ask. Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? Now keep in mind, John is the one who leapt in his mother's womb when the mother of his Lord came to visit. John is the one who saw the dove, the Holy Spirit, light upon Christ and certainly heard the voice of the Father confessing, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. John is the one who pointed out that that one, Jesus Christ, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He knew that Jesus is the Christ. And so he plants this with his disciples because they need to know that this is the Christ. There's the other darkness of the heart, right? That we have darkness within our hearts because of sin and despair and the condition of the world, but we also have darkness in our hearts because of unbelief. And so now John sends off his disciples who admittedly had been upset because it seemed that Jesus was baptizing more than John, and all the world was chasing after Jesus, and their, their master, their, their teacher, was decreasing as Jesus was increasing. It seemed even that 
John was unworthy to loose the sandals of Jesus. Now, they go with this question, and it would suffice to have a single word answer, right? I am the Christ, yes, or no. Look for another. But what does Jesus actually do here? He doesn't think it's sufficient to say yes or no, like I might as a parent when my child comes to me and says, may I have candy before supper? Well, no, that's silly. Instead, he gives a little sermon. Go tell John what you hear and see. Now, that little word go is very interesting because it's also connected to Matthew chapter 28. It's the same verb, in fact, the same participial form. And you know that when Jesus tells the disciples after his resurrection to go, that they are to make disciples of all nations. How? By baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and also teaching them all of the things that Jesus has commanded, which means these things right here. Jesus' disciples are to go forth with the good news of salvation to all the world. And now John's disciples are to take that message of hope back to John. Well, what's the message? The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And all of that is to say that all of the prophecies, those of Isaiah, those of the psalmists, those of the other prophets, they're all being fulfilled in me. The scriptures speak of me, and now I am here. Behold, your God has drawn near. Behold, your salvation has come. Behold, the strength of the Lord has been stirred up to save you, to set about all that was wrong and make it right. Jesus has come, and those who believe in his name have life. This is what was absolutely vital for the disciples of John to hear. For in hearing that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, they know now who they shall believe in. But Jesus doesn't stop with the miracles, does he? He moves on to that which seems very minor. The poor have good news preached to them. Well, that's nice. How pleasant for the poor to hear a good message today. Oh, please. It's more than a good message. This is salvation for John and for them. God visiting them in the flesh so that the darkness of their hearts can be lightened. John hears not only about the Old Testament prophecies being fulfilled, but then he receives this gift from Christ. That his sins are forgiven. His warfare is ended. All of his trespasses, all of his sins are covered over. He has comfort and peace, and joy in the Christ. And so off the disciples go to tell John of all of this joyous news, and there Jesus is left with the rest of the crowds. And Jesus then asks them, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? You know very well that's not John. That's not what you went out to see. John is unwavering, unflinching, strong in the truth of the Lord, preaching, even when it lands him in jail. What then did you go out to see? A man in fine clothing? 
You know very well that John was wearing camel's hair. None of you wore camel's hair today to church, I don't think. But there John was, and now where is he? In prison, locked up, probably in the king's household, but not wearing fine clothing. So then what did you go out to see? A prophet. And who did he prophesy about? Me. So then what did you go out into the wilderness to see? To see me. That was John's message. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so what have you come here to see? That same Jesus Christ here for you. John prepared the way. And now Christ is here to lighten the darkness of your heart. Are you despairing because your warfare with sin once again looks like a lost cause? Christ comes to give you the victory. Are you struggling once again with unbelief? Christ comes to give you the truth. Here he is, the one who's greater than John, who makes you great in the kingdom. Here he is preaching you good news today that your sins are covered over, your trespasses are forgiven. Here he is again today to proclaim to you what will happen on the last day. The dead, you shall be raised. Blind, you'll receive your sight. Deaf, you'll receive your hearing. Lame, you will be able to walk. It's all good news, preached to you once again this day. So, heralds of Zion, get up. Get up to the high places. Share this good news, this salvation with the poor who are around you. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.